Joining us live for our politics panel is Liberal MP Katie Allen, Labor MP Matt Thistlethwaite. Thank you for your time. Now, this coronavirus Diana. response, the language from the government has been very much ramped up over the last week. Matt Thistlethwaite, we'll start with you. What do you think about this discussion that we could be seeing a rise in the debt ceiling? Uh, well, obviously, the government needs to come up with a stimulus package, Annalise, um, and they're going to have to fund that somehow. We've been saying for some months now that the Australian economy has been struggling before the bushfires, before the coronavirus. Unfortunately, the outbreak of coronavirus in particular now is only going to make a bad situation worse. That's uh, brought about the need for a stimulus package to uh, boost the Australian economy to hopefully avoid a recession. Um, and the government doesn't have any meat, if you like, left in the budget to fund that. So they're going to have to go into additional debt. Uh, it does put pay to the notion that they're better economic managers at managing debt because when Labor left office, net debt was at about $175 billion. It's now at $430 billion and only going to increase because of this. So, uh, look, we'll have a look at what the government comes up with in terms of a package. But we've been saying for some months now that they needed to stimulate the economy. What do you make of that argument, Katie Allen? Is it reckless to be looking at increasing the debt cap to $600 billion? Well, let's just be clear. Uh, we had a uh, rise in our GDP of 0.5, higher than expected, uh, at the end of last year. So we're re definitely heading in the right direction. We've got a balanced budget. And now what we're looking at is a re an ability to respond to completely unexpected global shock that's going on. I mean, no one could have expected this. We've been through droughts. We've been through fires and now floods. Um, and so this is a, a very important time in our history to stay calm, but also to respond effectively. And I'm very pleased to hear what we're hearing with regards to a substantial package at the end of this week that's going to be proportionate, it's going to be calm, but also it's going to be able to be ramped up quickly using the current payment system. So I think this is good news that we as a country are going to be able to respond to what looks to be an extremely significant global event. It does seem like the government is pulling off the table I, the idea of a cash splash like we saw during the global financial crisis. Matt Thistlefight, do you think that this would be the time to be putting money in people's pockets or is it going to go very, very far considering most of us could be stuck at home and not able to spend it out in the economy anyway? Well, in the advice that uh, government received when uh, the global financial crisis uh, hit Annalise was to go early, to go hard and to go households. And that's exactly what Labor did when we were in government and it worked. Australia was the only nation in the OECD that avoided recession and kept people in jobs and that was vitally important. Um, that was a system that worked back then. You really need to, if you're going to stimulate growth in the economy, get money to people who will spend it and they're generally people who are on lower income. So my fear is that uh, it will be too little too late uh, well, it remains to be seen whether they go hard, whether they go households, but what certainly can be said is that they haven't gone early. Uh, and that's the big concern, I think, that it's too little too late um, and that we do see increases in unemployment. Uh, as we've been seeing for, for some months now, with particularly underemployment rising, unemployment rising, below trend growth, the Australian economy has been in a bad situation for at least the last couple of years and the government's done nothing about it. Katie Allen, do you agree? Is this too little too late? Well, let's just start with by saying that uh, my predecessor, uh, Peter Costello, actually handed over the books in a pretty pristine state when Labor came to government. And uh, to say that they were the responsible for the G Labor was responsible for the GFC doesn't take into account the historical context and the books that they inherited. And let's have a look at their pink bats and um, school halls, uh, you know, fiscal stimulation package, how successful that was. What we're looking at is a responsible set of measures that look at, um, you know, keeping people in their livelihood. Uh, we want to look at making sure that big businesses are supporting small businesses um, and I think the stimulation needs to look at what's proportionate and, rep and going to be useful that's going to be temporary because we don't want to have a baked in impact on the bottom line. So we've got to respond very quickly and I think the Prime Minister has laid that out in a very responsible way. Matt, do you agree with calls for a raise to new start as economic stimulus? Well, we've been saying for some months now that the government should uh, reconsider the level of new start um, and look to raise it. We all know that if you provide 
additional funding to people that are on very low incomes, that are on New Start and the like, they're not going to save it, they're going to spend it. Um, and they'll spend it on consumption within our economy. And that's one area in our economy over the last uh, two to three years where you've had very low rates of consumption. That's led to very low rates of business investment and that's affected productivity. For the first time since records have been kept in Australia, producti labour productivity has actually gone down under this government. Now, for, since they've, they've kept those records, it's always been growing, but it's been going down under uh, the recent couple of quarters with this government. And that says everything about their approach to economic management. So you do need to provide stimulus to households, particularly to low income people, who we know will spend that in the economy. And that's why we've been calling for the level of new start to be looked at. Katie Allen, what do you think? Would this be the kind of systemic change you think shouldn't be done long term or is it time for a raise to new start anyway? I think the issue is that everything's on the table at the moment and we're looking very closely at all possible um, responses. It is worth noting that retail spending uh, was increasing at the end of last year. In fact, that was helping with our GDP. So there was already a gentle turn in the economy. I think it's important that we have measures that are going to help keep people in jobs uh, and most importantly keep businesses going. Um, and that's the, the, the difficulty about this uh, future that we're moving into. The coronavirus is really something that's completely unexpected um, and to plan for this future we need to balance uh, the health of the nation uh, with the balance books and that's a really fine balance to do and I would say that uh, we've been really focused um, on making sure that the coronavirus epidemic here in Australia has been really well contained compared to other countries around the world and I think the fact that we've been on the front foot uh, we've been very prepared and that we're putting all our resources uh, into making sure that we're responding very well to this. Uh, it was very disappointing last week when uh, there was a national security committees that were meeting um, and yet Labor was calling for divisions all the way through despite the fact that the Prime Minister called uh, for pairs. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of resources being put uh, forward to respond to the coronavirus. We are listening and as we heard in, in earlier news stories, uh, the Attorney General who's also the Minister for Industrial Relations uh, has had Having round tables with small business and big business about responses that are going to help the economy and make sure that we get through this. And as the Prime Minister has said, we want to be ready for the bounce back. Uh, if I can just change gears for a moment, uh, the family law inquiry is starting in Queensland today. It's uh, the time when we really have this national focus on domestic violence after the horrific murder of Hannah Clark and her three children in Brisbane. Matt Thistlethwaite, do you think Pauline Hanson should be on that family law inquiry? Look, given the comments that Pauline Hanson's made uh, in the past, which we believe are insensitive and inappropriate, uh, there are question marks about her being on that inquiry. Um, you know, it comes on the back of the mo one of the most horrific cases of domestic violence that we've seen in this country. And um, I just feel so sorry for that family and those friends uh, who laid to rest uh, Hannah Clark and her beautiful children yesterday and it just highlights the need for a strong family law system, a very strong family court system in Australia, appropriate funding for early intervention um, and support services, particularly uh, domestic violence shelter support services in our community and making sure that we're actually trying to reduce uh, the incidence of domestic mm. violence in our society. So given the comments that she's made in the past, um, look, you know, I just don't see how you're going to get better outcomes um, given the approach that Pauline Hanson's taken in the past. Uh, Katie Allen, what do you think? Should Pauline Hanson be on that inquiry considering her comments, as Matt Thistlethwaite said? Well, I sit on a number of parliamentary um, committees myself with a number of inquiries, and the qu inquiries in the committees are evidence-based, which means um, everybody has an opportunity to proffer their views and their opinions, but the committee will look at the evidence base. Uh, there's not one committee member that has uh, you know, more impact than another. This is not chaired by Pauline Hanson, it's chaired actually by Kevin Andrews, and I know he will be very responsive to the evidence base uh, that is proffered to the committee. Um, and I think I welcome Matt's comments that um, you know, our record investment of $340 million last year into domestic violence, particularly $75 million uh, into emergency housing, um, as well as our loan relief for women who are facing domestic violence, is incredibly important because uh, women have to have the ability uh, to move quickly. Uh, we know that often that they delay um, taking the steps because they have nowhere to go, uh, they don't have the financial support. So uh, the steps that 
we've put in place, the record funding I think is very important and I really uh, welcome this investment in an incredibly important area for our community. We've run out of time so I have to leave it there. Matt Thistlethwaite and Katie Allen, thank you for your time. Thanks, Thanks Annalise. Annalise.